Hello, I'm Ben from Modern Gram, and today we are going to talk about KeyCorp. So if you are trying to be a better investor and make informed decisions, this is the video you want to watch to see what I think of this company. So KeyCorp is another bank. This is, I think, the third bank we've talked about this week, and it is one of the 10 companies that were on my high yield uh, stops list that we covered on a different day and the link for that video will be at the end of this one so be sure to check that out but anyway uh we are going to talk about this one so uh the important things from the balance sheet include the current assets current liabilities and long-term debt total assets intangible assets total liabilities and shares outstanding these are all the key figures that will play into the valuation. So that is why they're here. Gives you a good overview of the company there. Earnings wise, as many banks, I've said this multiple times this week, but they raised or like they, they earned pretty good. They rose up and then they fell during the financial crisis and they have been since coming back up. And that is shown in the normalized earnings to the earnings per share modern gram, which takes a look at the last five years of earnings and puts the most weight on the current year. That has kind of shown the same trajectory where it was pretty stable. And then it, of course, took a huge hit during the financial crisis and has been on its way back up since then. That growth has continued every year on the normalized earnings. Looking at the graph here, you can see that too. The blue line here or the blue bars here are the earnings per share. These are the not normalized ones. And then they come, they drop during the financial crisis and they've been on their way back up. Dividends have been doing about the same where they were rising steadily, then they dropped and now they've been rising again. You can see that in the table down below as well where there was a drop in the dividend growth for a few years during the financial crisis. And then the dividend resumed and it has been growing again since then. Dividend payout ratio for this company is typically in the 20 to 30 range, I would guess, or 20 to 40, I, I should say. Uh, last year in 2020 or a couple years ago in 2020, it had a higher rate as they were trying to maintain that dividend despite the earnings dropping for a little bit. So now stage one of the analysis is to determine if the company is suitable for the defensive or enterprising investor. The defensive investor is defined as anybody who is able to uh, do some research into uh, what companies they want, but they can't do a, a ton of research that would be the defensive investor. They don't want to take too much risk. The enterprising investor is able to absorb more risk because they are able to do a more thorough uh, investigation of every company that they are investing in. Now, the defensive investor has to pass six of the following seven tests. First is the market cap, uh, the, the size of the company. And that has to be over $2 billion. This one easily passes that. Current ratio has to be greater than two. This one passes that as well. Current ratio is 4.39. Earning stability, it has to have positive earnings for at least 10 years. It has achieved that. And it has to pay dividend for 10 straight years. It has achieved that as well. Earnings growth needs to grow by at least a third over 10 years using averages at the beginning and end of that period. It has done that. And the Price to earnings ratio has to be under 20. I use my normalized earnings figure here, and that brings a PEMG, the price to earnings modern gram ratio of 8.19. Moderate price to assets, you need to have a price to book ratio of under 2.5. This one passes that with a 1.24 price to book, and that. Uh, yeah, that passes the test. So that gives it a perfect score of seven points for the defensive investor. And thus, it is suitable for defensive investors. Now, enterprising investors. It is suitable for the enterprising investor by default because it is harder to be suitable for a defensive investor than it is to be suitable for the enterprising investor. But let's go through all of these anyway. Current ratio, as I said, is 4.39. That is greater than the enterprising investor's requirement of 1.5. So we pass there. Debt to net current assets. 
is 1.41, which is not quite good enough to pass the debt to net current assets requirement of under 1.1. So it fails that test. It has paid or it has had earnings positive for over five years and it has currently paid a dividend. So it passes those two. And then it has grown in earnings over the last five years. So overall, it gets four out of five points for the enterprising investor, and it is suitable in its own regard for that. Stage two is a determination of the intrinsic value, and we look at the modern Graham value formula, which is taken from Benjamin Graham's book, The Intelligent Investor. The value equals earnings per share times 8.5 plus two times the growth rate. I use my weighted average here, the earnings per share modern gram. And so we have to calculate that. That is one of the two main variables that we have to figure out in order to get value here. So earnings per share modern gram, again, it takes the last five years, these ones, and it uh, weights them with the most weight going to the uh, current year. So we get a 2.04 earnings per share modern gram. For growth, we look at the current earnings per share modern gram and the figure from five years ago to get a total growth of 64.49% over that five-year period divided by five. That is an average of 12.9% per year. Here we have a safety margin kicked in there because growth is such a key variable in the formula that we want to be a little bit more cautious with estimating growth. So it's also... A, a number that can be like uh, presumed to be the perpetuity growth. And so we don't want to assume that a company will grow too high or like too, too strongly in perpetuity because that is less likely to happen. So we have the safety margin here and we get the growth estimate of 9.67%. So calculating the value, we take the earnings per share and the growth and we plug it into our formula up here and we get the result of $56.68. Looking at the chart over here, you can see that we have the value way up here and the price down here. So clearly the price is undervalued, but officially the opinion over here, we've got the current price is $16.67 and the value is, like I said, $56.68. That is well under my threshold to get an undervalued rating. The modern gram grade takes into account several other factors and gives it points for each thing. Investor suitability, it gets two points for being suitable for the defensive investor. It gets a point for being a good undervalued price. It gives one point for trading below the gram number, which we'll talk about in a minute. It does not get any points for being a long-term dividend growth. It needs to have 20 years of dividend growth to achieve that point or to get those points. The dividend yield is above 2%, so it gets half a point there. And it is trading below the industry average in terms of price to earnings multiple. So that is where it's at. It does not trade below its net current asset value. Not very many do that. But uh, we get a total score of 5, which results in an A grade for this company. Stage three is to do further research. So at this point, you need to decide. You've decided that it is suitable for your investor type, and we've determined that it is undervalued. You need now to look at the company and decide, is this company good for your individual portfolio? That is something that you have to do on your end. I can't make recommendations about whether it's something that you should buy for your portfolio. I can just tell you my opinion is that it is undervalued. But some things that you can look at for further research are the net current asset value, which is a liquidation value. Here, it doesn't really apply. But if you do come across a company where it is trading below that figure, you know it is probably a really great bargain because every like you could take the current assets, the cash and things, pay off all of the liabilities, and then still have value. That is what net current asset value would be. That's not the case here, of course. Gram number formula. This formula is from a derived formula from Benjamin Graham's requirements for the defensive investor. And looking at it is another way to determine value. The Graham number result from this is $26.07. 
and that is higher than the price of 1667, which means that it is undervalued by the Graham number formula as well. The price to earnings modern Graham formula is a um, earnings multiple, and that comes to 8.19. So that is a relatively low price to earnings. Other useful information, current ratio, as I've said, is 4.39. The price to book ratio is 1.24. The dividend yield is 4.65%, which is rather high. And the uh, company has grown its dividends for 12 straight years. So that's all good to know. Okay, and stage four in the analysis is to look at the chart to determine if the company seems to be a good buying opportunity. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are uh, looking at the company and thinking that whether the market is about to have it be a good opportunity. You've decided that it would be a good fit for your company or for your portfolio. You want to make sure that you are maximizing your profits by getting in at the right time. So looking at the chart, we're looking at the daily view here, and you can see that back at the beginning of the year, we were in a downward trend, and it had kind of a resistance level there and support level on that downward side. And it came down here, and it hit this line that was a, a support level from way back here, and it locked into that and bounced back up. It broke through the upper level of that trend line, and then it came all the way up here and it hit some resistance up here, which was a line dating back to about here that it hit there. And then it was support there and kind of support there as well. And then kind of a little bit of movement around that line there too. So then it came back down and it has come back to this level again. And it seems like we've established a tighter trend line here. So what we can do is we can look at this a little bit closer. And we can see that if the company bounces off of this support level again and makes it through that trend line, it might be a, a, an opportunity. But it would also be a thing to watch up here at that resistance level. So those are things to keep in mind. But on the screen, as I mentioned, is the link to the video for the 10 companies that have high yields that I think you should look at. This was one of them. Click to watch and learn more about the others. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.